Welcome to my guide for the lore of the wild. In this guide I will go over every single spell in the lore and tell you how to best use them to make sure you're getting the most out of them in your battles. The lore of the wilds was added alongside the Beastmen in Warhammer 1, and quite like them, it hasn't really been touched since. This is a shame as it's actually a pretty good lore that goes excellently with the no defend only attack mentality of the Beastmen. Every single spell is focused on directly attacking your enemies or buffing your other troops that are doing so, and it's really a shame that we haven't seen this lore in any other factions since, with some minor tweaks, it could be a fun one for all to share. Oh, and if it isn't obvious, this lore is exclusive to the Beastie Boys. As usual, we're starting with the passive of the lore, Bestial Surge. It becomes active whenever the wild spellcaster is casting a spell, and it grants all allied units plus 18% charge bonus and plus 5% vigour for 9 seconds. These effects are very keeping with beastmen tradition, as they will assist the rest of your army as they move in for a spot of hitting and running. To get the most out of this passive, I'd say be sure to cast just as your units are about to make contact, as the increase to charge bonus can be significant depending on what units you have. As passives go, it's not too shabby, and as I said before, goes very well with the entire theme of the beastmen. Our first castable spell is Bray Scream, and it's a breath spell. It costs 5 winds of magic, has a 29 second cooldown, and a 100 meter cast range. It can only be cast on the ground, and causes minor magical damage in a short, wide, expanding tear shape. It's best used versus multiple units with medium armour, and depending on how you aim it, can hit a massive number of models in a single cast. Of course, since the damage is spread in its area of effect, it's not as effective against single targets, so I'd stick to clumps if you can help it. Overcasting, of course, comes with the usual 50% miscast chance that all other overcasting does, as well as increasing the cost to 7 winds of magic, increasing damage, and a 200m cast range. This overcast version would be a better choice when going against anything heavily armoured, and extended range means you'd be able to start damaging them well before they even neared your front lines. Both versions of the spell are very capable, and will do some great damage to units, even if they aren't picking up many kills. But as usual, with breath spells, the damage has no allegiance, so always make sure to aim correctly. Next up we have Vile Tide, which is an explosion spell. It costs 7 winds of magic, has a 31 second cooldown, and a 200 meter cast range. It can only be cast on the ground, and causes moderate magical damage in a large explosion. This explosion is stronger versus multiple units, and has a tough time getting through armour, so it's best used on large clumps of less armoured units to pick up a large number of kills. Again, this damage has no allegiance, so be sure your aim is true before you cast. Overcasting increases the cost to 9 winds of magic, and increases the AP damage of the explosion. This makes the spell a little better versus some moderately armoured units, but it's not going to start shredding greatswords all of a sudden. It's fairly self-explanatory when you should use each version of the spell, the normal version for clumps with little to no armour like flagellants, and the overcast version for units with medium armour like swordsmen. Devolve is next and it's a direct damage spell. It costs 11 winds in magic, has a 45 second cooldown, and a 100 meters cast range. It can be targeted either on the ground or on enemies directly, and it causes damage to everything in its 30 meter area of effect. This damage is best used versus multiple entity units, but even then there is a high chance of resistance for each tick of damage. It also causes affected units to suffer minus 8 leadership, and the effects last for 11 seconds. This is a great spell for using on the enemy front lines while your units are in combat, as it will deal damage and break the morale of all units in the affected area. The overcast version of the spell costs 20 winds of magic, and increases the duration to 22 seconds. This would be a good option for when the enemy lines are a lot tougher, and your units need the extra help with extra damage and leadership penalties to pull through. Both versions of this spell are pretty good, but also fairly standard for a direct damage spell, so while they aren't anything to write home about, are good additions to the law. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You there, are you a part of the 11%? 11% of what? The 11% of people subscribed, of course. If you're not, or what are you waiting for? The button's right there. Subscribing will ensure you never miss a video, and has been proven to increase your epic gamer scale by at least 1%. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, you could also like the video to be in with a chance of winning eternal happiness. So go ahead and subscribe, and join the 11% today. Now return you to your regular scheduled programming. Next up we have another direct damage spell, Traitorkin. It costs 12 winds of magic, has a 39 second cooldown, and a 100 meter cast range. It can be cast directly on enemies or on the ground, and causes all units in its 30 meter area of effect to be damaged. This time it's more effective versus single units, but of course there is always the chance of resisting damage each tick. On top of the damage it also reduces the speed of affected units by 
This makes it into a good spell for slowing down units such as mounted heroes to allow your units to catch up to them and prevent them from escaping. The overcast version costs 20 winds of magic and deals increased damage as well as reducing speed by a massive 48%. This overcast version is great for casting on lords on incredibly fast mounts with large health pools as they will have no means to run away and not much HP to do it with. Both versions of the spell are great for using versus an army with a lot of single targets such as lords and heroes but also giant units. I'd say the regular spell is best used against heroes and less threatening giant units whilst the overcast is best used against lords and top tier single entity units. Mantle of Gorok, not that Gorok, is next up, and it's an augment spell. It costs 11 winds of magic, has a 47 second cooldown, and a 200 meter cast range. It can be cast on allied units, and grants them plus 50% base weapon damage, plus 40 melee attack, and plus 50% AP weapon damage for 29 seconds at a cost of minus 30 armor, and there is no option to overcast. This again goes with the only attack, never defend mentality of the beastmen, because you get some really incredible damage bonuses at the cost of making your units drastically more exposed. I'd say you really have to pick your moments when using this spell, as one wrong cast could cause your units to go down incredibly quickly before they can make the most of the damage. Only use it when you're sure your unit will survive, and are preferably at high health. Finally we come to Savage Dominion, which is a summon spell. It costs 18 winds of magic, has a 48 second cooldown, a 60 meter cast range, and a limit of 2 uses. It can only be cast on the ground, and summons a Saigor that will degrade over time. There is no option for an overcast here, but you really don't need it. Saigors are incredible units with excellent range damage as well as good melee prowess. They're kind of like the Beastmen Necrofex, but not quite as good. Still, having an extra two of them to summon onto the battlefield that already has 20 units on it can be a serious advantage if they can use up a lot of their ammo before degrading to nothing. There isn't really a bad time to use this one since the unit can help you at any time during the battle, but it's probably for the best if you use it early on so you can use your other units to defend it whilst it fires. That concludes this guide on Lore of the Wild. If you enjoyed this video at any point, then please do consider leaving it a like, as it really does help out a lot. Leave a comment with anything you think I missed or should include in future videos. If you'd like to see more videos about Total War Warhammer, then there are links in the description to my series. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then maybe click that subscribe button so you stay up to date. After all, it is free. For now though, I was Colonel Danvers, and I'll see you next turn. <laughs>